Look, I mean, and, and, and so what so what are your thoughts about, you know, the the law enforcement world today? I mean, it's a whole different ball game. I mean, probably when you were in and the way it is today, I mean, a lot of people don't want to go into law enforcement now because it's just a tough, tough thing. You're one word, you're one situation away from getting fired and losing your 20 year old pension or whatever. I mean, what are your thoughts yeah. on that? Well, I tell you, I'm still funny. I'm still a reserve with the LA County Sheriff. So I work, work, you know, a couple shifts a, a month. It's definitely a different world, but I also, you know, I help remind people of this law enforcement hires from the human race and there's going to be some bad apples. There's going to be people that maybe slip through the cracks. And when you see these incidents happen on the news and I don't, I'm not, I'm never going to sit on my couch and judge what happened because I don't know, but I always tell people this and my friends, even some of my friends that are a little strong against police. I'll say, Hey, would you walk down that alley at one o'clock in the morning uh, looking for a bad guy? No, you, you, you'd run home and so I said, well, things happen, but it is a tougher, you need to be more of a public relations expert. You need to be more of a communicator now and um, be kinder to people. That's all I could say. But like I said, we hire from the human race. And I always reflect on this and say, listen, there's bad lawyers, there's bad doctors, there's bad everything. Obviously when a cop does something bad, it's magnified because it's on the news, right? So I don't justify bad behavior. I just think it's a tough, tough, and by the way, I'm friends with a lot of police officers and, and I go to these events and I noticed that the last event I was at, which was a fitness event, there were 10 police departments recruiting and they basically, none of them can fulfill the, the needs because a lot of young people are like, why would I want to be a cop? Like, it looks like a horrible job. So I feel for it. It's still a great, it's a great career, great benefits, but you have to have the right mindset to be a community leader. It's not, you know, it's not for everybody. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's 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 really heartbreaking because uh, I mean, I've always been pro cop, and I've always been trying to you know get people to to be proud of you know number one, be proud of America. I mean, it's it's really yeah, interesting yeah, to right. me. I was having a conversation, uh, you know, because it's I was having a conversation with a friend the other day, and I said it's just a sad thing that uh, so many people are anti-American anti-cop, anti-American, anti, it's like, this is, I, I mean, cause I, as you know, I, I do a lot of traveling. I, I've been all over the world. I yeah. mean, it, and I've seen a lot of really <laughs> amazing places and cultures and people and, and, and a lot of great places around the world, but there's nothing better than the United States of America. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I just, there's just nothing better, yeah, yeah. you know, because every single time I go somewhere out of the country, I'm always excited to come back. I mean, there, there's this that that point yeah. in time where you're like, and you get on the plane and you get off and you, you know, you're in LAX and you get out of the, the airplane and you're like, wow, I'm in America. And it just feels good to be in America. And, and a lot of people think America is really bad from other countries. Yeah. They think America is bad because of our news. Our media is so anti-American. Yeah. And so, so it's just sad yeah. to me. I don't know how you feel, but, you know. Yeah. No, no, it's a great, listen, it is. You're right. It's a great place. And when people will kind of talk bad about it, I go, listen, don't go, go. You want to live in Iran? You want to live in yeah, the Soviet Union? Exactly. See, see, you, 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 I have friends of mine that are from China that literally to this day, there's rules. You don't just, you can't say bad things about the government. You know, so we have a pretty nice gig here. I always tell people, you, it's maybe there, we have our own challenges here. Maybe there's some political things you don't agree with, but you've got a pretty nice gig. You could walk down the street and have a Starbucks at nine o'clock in the morning, and you have the right to do anything you want with your life. You can be an entrepreneur. You can be a millionaire. In other countries, you could become a millionaire, and the government decides to take everything from you because they don't like what you did. So yeah. it, 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 it's a nice place, and I love coming back here. And, and by the way, I've visited some amazing places, and they're great. But you're right. There's nothing better to come home. And that feeling of, you know, we're the freest country in the world, you know, with, and more with, the, with the most opportunity. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, with with the most opportunity uh, in endless. the world, endless, unlimited opportunity, can, man. It's the only place now where you can literally be in your young 20s and become a millionaire. Amazon mm -hmm. selling things, doing things. And it's crazy. So, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. You 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 grew up around uh, alcoholism when you were a kid. And how did that, uh, how, how has that affected you, uh, you know, growing up and your success and in, in your life? 
Um, yeah, it's interesting. I never really like when I was in it, I didn't really know what I was in. So I'll tell you, it's generational, by the way, my grand, my grandmother was an alcoholic and my mom was an alcoholic. Now I didn't know at the time. I mean, she was a function al alcoholic, like she would drink wine at night and fall asleep on the couch. Right. And I just thought, Oh, I guess everyone does that. Right. Cause I'm just right. a young teenager, not even maybe 11, 12. And I remember we had a family talk when my dad called us all together. Hey, listen, your mom's going to try and get help. But if she doesn't, I don't know what I'm going to do. And we're all like, what? Like, what's that mean? And thank God she was so, she got involved with AA and stayed sober for like the rest of her life. But it was a panic mode for me because I'm like, wait, there's a problem in our household. Like that's a, and I didn't know that until I remember I dated a girl in high school. I went to her house and, 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 her, and she thought, oh, my mom's always sleeping on the couch drunk. And I was like, oh, there's other people that experience this. So, but alcoholism hit, hit, us, hit our family hard. My little brother, who's a lawyer, and has done quite well, but he almost got thrown out of college, ran up my dad's credit card bills, drinking all the time. He ended wow. up getting a divorce drinking. My older brother died of liver failure. So it, it was rampant. Now we all, I say this, I, I somehow avoided that bullet. If you want to call it, I'm sure I have other um, things I obsess on uh, or addictions. But I, I've probably been buzzed, buzzed, not even drunk six or seven times in my life. That's it. I don't drink. Wow. wow. Now, maybe okay. subconsciously I've suppressed that say hey, I've seen nothing but bad things out of this. And even some of my friends are like, oh, it's okay to have a drink occasionally. I said, listen, I, I don't think I'm missing anything. I've never, right. you know, my friends, when they get a DUI or get in a fight with their boyfriend or girlfriend, I, I'm, 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 I don't think I've missed anything by not drinking. But it's, it's, uh, it's clearly addictive and and oh, even yeah. so i mean transparently and if my son sees the show he's got a major drinking problem right now he's a he's a vet a war yeah. vet but he 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 he's he's not getting he won't get help i've tried to turn on the tree so i'm dealing with that now currently yeah, in, yeah. in real time so it definitely can it can destroy someone's life and i i feel it you know i feel it more and more so. Well, there's, there's no question. It's, uh, it's highly addictive. And it's one of those yeah. things where uh, there's no there's no question that it's it, it ruins people's lives. I mean, alcoholism right. is real. And it's a major, major challenge. And, and I think it, it, you're right. It's generational, for sure. I mean, I, I watched you know, my father and his father and everybody, you know, and, and then, and then it's just, it's also society, it, you know, it's societal as right. well, where uh, it's so sure. common. It's such a common practice. You know, I just went to a, uh, a big uh, 50th party uh, with a, a very good friend of mine. And uh, it's, it's, unbelievable how much alcohol is flowing <laughs> through the veins of everybody and uh, right. you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I mean, I still drink uh, socially, but I, I think that even for my situation, I, you know, this point in my life, I'm a, probably 90% down from the way I might have drank 10 years ago. And I, and I'm proud yeah. of that. And, and I, I don't think I was ever an alcoholic or anything. I never, I never, you know, one for thing, sure. just advice for everybody, by the way, I think this is how I steered clear of all that my whole life is because I never have alcohol in my house. So if it was social, yeah, I'd go out and have drink, whatever, that's fine. But when I come home, I don't have a drink. Like people come home yeah. and they literally will pour their scotch or their whiskey or whatever and they right. do it every single day. And I can't ever imagine, like, I don't have beer in my, you know, I'm other alcohol. I don't have uh, you know, maybe I might have a couple of bottles of wine or something like that. A lot of times those yeah. are just so that way I can bring it for a gift right. somewhere or whatever. But the truth is, it's like when you don't have it in your house. I mean, I, I have, you know, I had a, a really nice house in Rancho and a big, you know, 6,000 square foot house. And, uh, and, and everybody told me put a big wine, you know, a wine wall and, you know, have a bunch yeah. of wine. And I never did it. Bruce, I never did it because I never mm -hmm. wanted that temptation of having a huge wall of wine. Then people drink every single night. They think they have to have a glass of yeah. wine before they go to bed. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, a lot of, a lot of female friends are, oh, I can't wait to have a glass of wine on wine tonight. And it's like an everyday thing. Yeah. yeah. I just avoid it. And, and, and another thing is I've never acquired a taste for it, which I think is a blessing. Right. I mean, I yeah. just, I've been for, I mean, yeah, I'm sure I've, got other issues like you know workaholic as they, they don't call it that now but back in the day they call it workaholic now you're an entrepreneur right yeah yeah um, exactly. so we all have our own obsession yeah right but right. 
you know, I'm just, I, I see, I've seen too many people's lives destroyed. So it's like, you know, and I always like to talk to people about it and try and help them, but you know, you got to want to help first, right? Thank you for watching. If you like this video and you want to watch another clip, click right here. If you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.